Hello and welcome everybody to this small online lecture from Multiscale Consulting about how to model surface roughness using sinusoidal waves. To understand contact mechanics and rubber friction, it is very important to describe the surface roughness on the contacting solids in a proper way. This is in detail explained in our lecture on surface roughness. The aim of this lecture is simply to visualize the process of how a randomly rough surface can be described using Fourier transformation. If you're interested in these topics, you may also find more material on our homepage multiscaleconsulting.com. Let's say we have measured a randomly rough surface, for example an asphalt road surface, using a stylus instrument. We then usually have obtained information about the height h as a function of coordinate or measurement point. Knowing the lattice constant of the instrument, one can easily convert from measurement point to coordinate by multiplying the point number with the lattice constant. We can see from this measurement that the height change looks chaotic with roughness components on different length scales. We can basically differentiate between macro scale roughness components, which are superimposed by smaller scale roughness. Let us now try to model this curve using the Fourier transformation. The Fourier transformation is used in numerous applications to model and or analyze complicated curves by adding up sinusoidal waves with different amplitude a, frequency f, and a random phase shift v. Here we show the equation for a single sinus signal describing only roughness on a single length scale. Usually one calculates this in q space, where q is the wave vector. We can then write it as a sum, as shown in the bottom of this slide. But let's have a look now on how this is done. On this slide we plot the measured roughness profile in the upper left figure. In the lower left figure we will plot the particular sinus wave used to model this rough profile. This is a process as we will start using sinusoidal waves on large length scales and then, if necessary, add smaller and smaller curves to obtain the best fit. We will plot this procedure by looking at particular sinusoidal waves and how they are added one after another. However, before starting with the Fourier transformation, we will first remove the tilting of the profile by introducing a best fit line. As explained before, we see the particular curve in the lower left figure, while in the upper left figure the green curve will show the sum of all curves we are going to add. After removing the tilting, we start the Fourier transformation by having one single sinus wave. This means that we fit a single sinus wave into the 1000 measurement points. The corresponding frequency is calculated by dividing the number of measurement points by 2 pi times the number of sinusoidal waves we want to fit. Here n is 1 and the amplitude a is 0.25 mm. In the upper left figure we can now see the sum of the best fit line and the sinus wave shown in the lower left figure. The upper right figure shows the square of the amplitude a as a function of the number of sinus waves fitted into the measurement range. Both axes are on a log scale. We can clearly see that the combination of the best fit line plus the single sinus wave does not describe the profile in a satisfying way. So let us add some more waves. This next wave is chosen so that n is 2 and the amplitude is about 0.14 mm. We see that the error between the green curve and the measured profile has become smaller compared to before. However, it is still necessary to include sinus waves with higher frequencies. This is done in the next slides, where we add sinus waves with n equals 4, 8, 16, 32, and 64. We see that the arrow between the measured profile and the green curve, which is the sum of all the blue curves shown below, becomes smaller and smaller. What we also see is that the chosen amplitude plotted in the upper right figure decays in a linear manner with the frequency f or the corresponding n if you plot both axes on a log scale. This illustrates the fractal nature of the measured profile. We can now go even further and include more roughness components by changing n to 128 and then 256. We will stop this process now here, as with the naked eye it is not possible to see the difference anymore. However, if we would magnify a region of the profile, we would be able to see how smaller scale roughness components would be added, resulting in an even better match between the red and the green curve. Let us have a closer look again at this process. 
Adding up smaller and smaller scale sinusoidal waves to a best fit line results in a very good approximation of a complicated surface roughness profile. This process is called Fourier transformation and it results in a rather simple mathematical description of the curve. One can then use this description, for example, for contact mechanics or rubber friction calculations. Let's summarize this again. We have learned that any roughness profile can be approximated as a sum of many sinusoidal waves with different amplitudes, frequencies and a random phase shift. This can easily be applied to a full three-dimensional topography measurement of any randomly rough surface too. In case you want to learn more about surface roughness and how to characterize it, or on contact mechanics and rubber friction, please have a look on our homepage multiscaleconsulting.com where you can also find additional online lectures on these topics. Thank you very much, we hope to see you again.